with the back. Just to give you an update, I've actually um, cut the baseline nice and square already. Because again, I don't want to spend too much time doing that. We just cut that square, we cut about three inches off. And now what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at the curl that she has and begin to layer it around the front as well. What I do want to do is I want to focus mostly around cutting the front of the hair so it's a little bit shorter and working with long top layers. This whole section here, I'm going to disconnect at this stage because I want an element of weight through the baseline. I don't want to overly um, layer the underneath area, keep your head still for us, because I don't want it to look too stringy. I want there to be an element of weight through here. So the section that I've taken, if we want to come around the front, we've worked a center parting, as you can see, all right, from the front hairline down to the nape. And then we've worked about one, two, three inches from the hairline and work diagonal back to just behind the ear, okay? Because her hair here is actually shorter than it is through the front because of it being a little bit weaker. So what we want to do, we want to actually cut it shorter around the front here. Nothing crazily short, but shape it around the front so she can flip it from side to side. If you come around the back, we've then isolated this top section. From the diagonal back, we've worked it into a lower point to the occipital bone, okay? And we've done that on both sides. And when we've twisted the hair, we've twisted and twisted and twisted and twisted until all the hair is out the way. Don't leave the ends hanging because it'll just look messy and get in your way. All right, so let's begin cutting around the front here. So I'm gonna just take the clips out around the front and just actually put them around the back so we're not touching this back area any longer, okay? Would you rather cut curly hair or wet or dry? Um, it all depends on what curl that we're working on. In this case, I prefer to cut it wet because I'm going to approach it from a technical standpoint. But if you see some of the videos on my Instagram or Joyko's Instagram that I've done before, sometimes when the hair's a lot more curly and tighter, I will just do section by section and work visually and cut it dry. So it all depends on the actual individual that I'm working on. By the way, for all those watching, welcome. I appreciate you guys taking the time out. Hopefully you'll learn a few things. What I would love from you is if you keep the questions coming. The more questions you ask, the better it is and the more of an interactive experience this whole day will be. All right, so we're gonna start around the front. I'm gonna wet down the hair again with a bit more luster lock. Just close your eyes for me. We're gonna spray that through generously. You can be very generous because curly hair needs as much moisture as possible because if not it will be frizzy so you've got to be quite generous with the leave-in conditioner um, and, and we're just going to do it from underneath as well and work that all the way through and then we're going to start to layer this front area i'll get you to hold that for us thank you so much maggie okay look down for me so we're going to start with combing everything forward all right and we're going to layer this graduation around the front and you'll see what i mean by but what I'm saying, look how long, if you put your head up on me, look how long the front is, okay? It's all the way down here. Yes, we know curly hair jumps, but even when it jumps, it's still too long. So we wanna, we wanna cut it so it's just below the jaw level around this area here. So that way she can flip it, put it behind the ear and put it in a ponytail. All right, so we're gonna take a guideline as wide as the comb, if you can just see, not wide, not wider than that. So as wide as the comb, anything wider, is too wide you start inverting each section i'm going to come around this side actually you want to come here and you'll notice that i'm actually almost going to slip over you'll notice i'm using the wide end of the comb because i don't want to overly force the tension that we have all right so kind of loose working from there and we're going to work short to long like that and this is where we're going to shape the front a lot more so just working with the same angle making sure I'm happy with the way that's sitting like that. And when that drops, have a look. It's still very long. When I come to subdivide both sections, if you want to come around the front ash, you'll see that it's still quite long around the front. Look where, look where it is. It's all the way, put your head up straight. It's all the way there. So we've cut a good couple of inches from the bottom. I'm going to leave it like that for now. I quite, it's going to jump when it's dry. So you just want it to be at a length that looks longer when it's wet knowing that it's going to jump when it's dry. Okay, next section, we take a diagonal section and we're going to invert that to the very center, okay? Using the wide end of the comb and working that through 
and inverting everything to the center. So we start graduating the front by layering it through and working with elevation. Okay, nice and clean. Next section, same thing. Work from that point down and directing everything to the center. You always want to work the inversion towards you, not away from you. So you'll notice my body position is on the opposite side. And that's what's going to enable me to move everything towards me so I have more control of the inversion. Okay, loosely working with the comb and just cutting that off like so. Okay, last. What does what? Very good question. Number one, it allows the hair to be detangled a lot easier. So I, it's a great cutting lotion. Um, in addition to that, it keeps my sections nice and clean and maintains more moisture for a longer period. In addition to that, it feeds the hair with protein, but also protects the hair against the thermal heating later on. So it does a whole lot of things, but why I do it before I cut is to keep my sections clean and to keep the hair nice and moist. Okay, so working that and that is that for the front. You've got to make sure your fingers are parallel, if you want to come from the front, are parallel to the center part. Put your head straight, Maggie. See my fingers are parallel? They're not twisted. They're not twisted. They're parallel, and they're coming right to the center through here. Okay, so when I comb this forward, have a look. We start the graduation through the layering. So when I pull all this up and out, you'll see that it's worked from short to long. Can you see that? This is just a loose hair. Let me just get rid of that and that one there. We've got the graduation perfectly done. How? By working it short to long there. Because what happens when you, pull, when you pull everything out short to long, guess what happens when it falls? It falls short to long. And that's how you create that graduation that we have through in here. All right, so later we're gonna just tidy this up. But before I do that, I wanna do the other side, okay? So, same thing, but you'll notice I stand on the opposite side. Everything's now worked towards me with the same end of the comb, pulling it out, and you can see, if you can't see the guideline, it's too long. Sorry, it's too thick. So you've got to take smaller sections. Okay, make sure you're happy with that. Make sure it's inverted to the center. Make sure it's balanced and clean. All right, cool. Next section we take is a diagonal forward section and we do the same thing everything technically approaching the hair and making sure that what we're creating is going to suit Maggie because suitability is everything there's no use of doing a haircut or a color that's so technical but then you know you, you, at the end it doesn't look good Maggie doesn't really care what technique I use all she cares about is the end result so always keep that in mind whenever you choose your technique that is going to create the end result that you've discussed with your client. Just going to move this clip slightly further in. Okay, last section here, because it's not much hair that's going to reach, I can do it all in one go, making sure I'm coming that from the roots. These little hairs around the mask, they won't, they're not going to reach. So don't worry about those. And just make sure that you're working everything into the center. Are your fingers facing up on the opposite side? Am I doing what, sorry? Are your fingers facing up on the opposite side? They're, yes, yes they are. Because on, when I'm on the opposite side, I'm facing down, but I'm working from short to long, both ways. Absolutely, good, good point. All right, so before I carry on, I like to check for balance and make sure that this is perfect. So what we do, the best way to check balance around the front is number one, stand square to your model or client. All right, a couple of tips I'm gonna give you from a client standpoint. When I'm this close to a client and I'm checking someone's hair like this, number one, make sure your breath is not a smoker's breath. I'm just gonna give you some tips. If you're a five-star hairdresser and you're a five-star salon, you don't wanna be breathing down someone's face really close, checking their hair, but still breathing in them. I think that's a good point. Second point, I think it's I think it's kind of intimidating. <laughs> You're laughing. I think it's I think it's kind of intimidating when you're really close and checking someone's hair so close. So I think what I normally always say is close your eyes for me. That way I'm relaxed, she's relaxed, and I can just check at peace and make sure I'm happy without being so intimidating to the client or the model. 
Okay, this is so far so good. Wanna make sure that's balanced there. And then around the very bottom, make sure that's balanced as well. This side I know was a little shorter, the very bottom here, but I'm gonna make it balance on both sides. But what I'm checking is the balance on both sides on the same point by pulling it towards myself, okay? So, just gonna come through in here first. I'm still using the wide end of the comb and now I'm gonna just strengthen up the perimeter so it's tidier through here. Okay, so you can point cut if you like, you can club cut, whatever you fancy, as long as it's soft and later we're gonna detail when it's dry. Come around this side, Ashley, so you can see. All right, and then through in here as well. You've gotta be careful with curly hair. I think, you know, some of us think curly hair is the same as straight hair and it's not. It's gonna jump a lot more. So you've gotta be a little bit more aware of the jump when it's completely dry. Okay, so here, it's quite perfect. We're just gonna begin point cut a little bit and then pull up the other side and just get the very, very bottom through here. And your fingers and comb are parallel to diagonal back section. All right, so it's a little weak. We're just gonna strengthen it up through that bottom area there. Okay, let's check for balance one more time. Make sure we're completely happy before we move on to the next section. Okay, any other questions so far, Ash? so true right i think you know when we come to think of clients we can't just think of the cut and color it's like a restaurant you can't just think about the food food's important but so is the service if we can provide five star service and five star cuts and colors they will wait for you and uh, wait for you until you're available to get their hair done because they know it's not just about the haircut it's also about the experience okay so Again, a little, just, I'm very, very fussy. I'm just cutting minim, like minimal off. Just through in there. And I'm gonna check the very bottom one more time. Okay, that little bit there. Okay, let me check that one more time. And then I think we can move on to the next section. Cool. That's good as well. Make sure it's the same spot. That's great. Okay, I'm, I'm much happier with that. Now, if it's a little heavier when it's dry, we can always twist cut and I'll show you what that means so especially around this very front area what I like to do because it's curly hair we want to promote the curl so you kind of twist it like that away from the face all right twist it so it's twisted from roots to ends and then you grab your scissors don't come too short come from about there and just slight cut and what that does it softens the hair so it's not a chunk through that very front area and it's only two sections. You only need to do that on two sections. So you can do the same thing on this side. She's probably thinking, what is he doing? And you know what? If your client doesn't know what you're doing, explain what you're doing and why you're doing it. Always explain what you're doing and why you're doing it. So let me give you an example. Okay, Maggie. So I know this looks scary, but what I'm doing, I'm using a twist cut technique. I'm not cutting the whole thing off. I'm just slightly cutting a little bit. And what that does, it softens it and promotes the curl when you come to dry and you'll see when, when it's coming to dry, you'll see what I mean. Okay, leave that for now. Let's do the other side. And we can have a look at this again when it's dry. So now I'm gonna twist the opposite away from the face. So I did away from the face on this side. I'm gonna do away from the face this side. Little techniques like this make a difference. You know, you're cutting internally, not just externally. So even though we're creating the shape around the perimeter, we're also cutting into the hair to promote the curl. She's got gorgeous curly hair. All right, so start from about there, there, and there. Cool. Let's do one more here. Make sure it's the same on the other side. Always make sure it's the kind of same. It's a little thicker, so I'm gonna take a little less. Perfect. So even though you're being technical, you're also being visual to make sure that the balance is gonna be the same on both sides. All right, so we're twisting, twisting, twisting everything over, and we're gonna do a little bit of the twist cutting here also. Okay, so from about mid lengths. Cool. Now, I'm just gonna have a look at this, come close. I'm gonna comb this out, look. As I comb this out, look at the hair that comes out. Look at this, look at that. That's all weight. But look, 
the length is still there and I've just softened that. Come over this side, Ash. Ready? I'm just going to comb all that through. Comb it through. It's all going to come out. All that. Just wait. But it's still there. And when you come to curl it, it's going to be softer and not so dramatic. But you've promoted the curl around the front as well. All right. Let's do the last section, which is the top section. Are you guys enjoying this so far? Give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this. Yeah, it's great tip with the kids' coat. Can it be done throughout the hair? Yes, it can be. But you've got to be careful where you do it and how much you do of it. So because the back, I don't want it to be all stringy. I want it to be kind of weighty. I don't want to do it too much right now. If when it's dry, I feel that it needs a little bit more, I will. But at this stage, I'm kind of liking just doing it around the front. And you can do it also through the top. I don't like doing it around the perimeter too much because then it could look a little too thin. So it's using the technique in areas to solve problems, not just doing it for the sake of doing it. But you can do it, yes, throughout the shape. So look what I'm doing now. I'm clipping away the hair that's out the way through the top. So I'm just putting these extra ones here because I'm going to start working this top section. This top section, really, I don't want to do anything crazy. I'm going to work like a, a long square layer. So what I'm going to do is firstly just keep your head still for us if you can. Comb all that through. That luster lock I prepared with. Look at this. Look how easy it is to comb through the hair. Once you've got luster lock in there, it's a nice leave-in conditioner that allows the hair to detangle and to comb through quite nicely. Okay. So what I, want, I like always splitting the top section into two. So what I'm going to do is firstly grab the section on this side. Okay and just take a radial section. So we're splitting that into two. All right, so we're working with the back first. I'm gonna move this section away. Just keep your section super, super clean so it's easier to manage, okay? And just use the spare clip and clip that sitting forward, okay? As long as it's away from the face, I'm happy. Same thing on the other side. You wanna come on this side, Ash? You'll see it probably better. All right, so we're subdividing this section as well, making sure the section's perfect and clean. All right, and then we're combing this away from the section that we're about to cut and away from her face, and then just putting a nice little clip so it's nicely tucked away while we can focus mostly on the back section. Okay, so it's away from the face and it's away from the section now, and I've got the section clipped underneath. This is why we clip the section underneath so it doesn't disrupt the top. I put my finger through in here. Look down for me, Maggie. Look down. Okay. I put my finger in there and I drag the comb to my finger so it doesn't interrupt the shape. All right. And then we put the hair. So it's all clean. You know exactly what you need to cut. It's these two sections here. This is where we're going to cut a little bit off the hair. Again, it's a lot of hair using the wide end of the comb. I'm going to cut this first 90 degrees. So we're going to cut that through, round to the head shape, 90 degrees. All right, nothing too sure, but by rounding it like so, it's going to allow the hair to sit nice and like soft, seamless layering. The whole purpose is to create internal volume and shape. But if I lower my hands and pull it straight up and straight out and cut it like so it's going to be quite heavy so the higher the elevation the softer and more seamless it's going to sit okay so i'm going to take another section diagonal section like so all right and i'm going to direct over to the previous guideline okay so this one will go to the center make sure the distribution is combed nicely using the wide end of the comb and then we work those ends off. Okay, and that's gonna make the hair so much more healthier. Cool. Next section, I subdivide this one into two. So pivoting. And I use this last section and I direct it to the previous. So you're only going previous, previous. And that will give you a slight element of length as you travel around towards the front. Okay, so that's going to be elevated up at 90. 
There we are. You can see the guide line and work that round at 90. Cool. Okay, next section. We do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Let's pick all the hair up so we know what we're doing. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna stand on the opposite side because I wanna stand on the same side as the guide line. All right, so subdivide this side. So we've cut this side, let's move this away. All right, and now we can work towards this side here. So we do diagonal pivoting. So from the front we pivot from the center and we direct to the previous guideline. It's technical. The technique is what gives you shape. If you do the same thing, guys, over and over again, you're gonna create the same result over and over again. So it's good to learn different techniques, but don't just learn them, actually apply them in the salon and you'll start to see really cool and new results. And I think as hairdressers, we can fall in the trap of, oh, we're running late or we don't really care I think it's good to challenge yourself to try new techniques because that's what's going to keep your clients inspired but it's going to keep you inspired as a hairdresser as well and this is what you know joico education is all about we're all about sharing different techniques that you could apply in the salon we don't do techniques that's too crazy and not wearable our goal is to share with you wearable commercial easy to apply techniques whether it be cutting or coloring so that you can update your skills but also update your, your clients with new trends as well and new shapes. So just gonna work that nice and clean. People always say, do you always point cut? Not necessarily, it always depends on who I'm working on and the texture that I'm working with. So because this is curly and because the elevation is so high, I like to work with club cutting in this case. Okay, last section on this side. Good question. I, I put a new uh, guideline. So what I did, I took a section in the center and just lifted it up at 90. I looked at the length, I looked at my hands and I, I started a new guideline. This is called a disconnection. So I'm not connecting it to anything, I'm disconnecting it, but at the end it will all seamlessly sit on top of each other. So even though technically it's not connected to the bottom, when it sits because of the elevation, it'll fall and fall seamlessly through the top. Great question, please keep those questions coming. So another question you're probably gonna ask me is, well, how long do you leave it? How short do you take it? Very good question. You gotta be visual, okay? So even though I'm being technically what works on the hair. So in this case, I'm just gonna check now for balance, make sure the balance is good and the length is good. Again, I don't wanna go too short with her layers, so I know what happens with, with curly hair. So I'll make sure that's, per that's perfect. Okay, let me just explain this. If you go too short with curly hair on the layers, you as hairdressers know what's gonna happen. Even clients know what's gonna happen. It's gonna go whoo, too much. I do want it to come out and I do want it to lift a little, but if I go too short with the layers, it's gonna be too, you need an element of weight for it to actually sit flatter. That's why I'm not going extremely short with the layers, I'm working with longer layers, but we're still cutting a good two, three inches off. Um, so when you come around the back ash, because I work this into a point, now later, what you might find, this, this hair may be reaching the bottom or even a little bit longer. That's okay, because of the section that we took, it came into a point, so this point section might come down over, it might not, we'll see how it goes. But before I carry on, I want to start to work brick cutting through in here. Brick cutting is what's going to elevate the hair slightly, okay? So we're taking a horizontal section, let's leave that for now, okay? From the point, we're elevating everything up. Come around probably from the front if you want, actually. All right, so we've, now we're going to cut internally, okay? Don't panic. Um, maybe. Okay, this is what's going to help promote the curl. Okay, and when I comb that through, the length is still there, but the weight is taken away. And that's what helps the hair to move a lot more when she's swinging it around. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. So we're working externally, and now we're working internally. Very important when you're cutting curly hair, you can't just work on cutting externally without approaching it internally because it needs to be movable. It's different fabric. You don't treat silk like you do wool. You have gotta be more delicate with it. 
Okay, so everything up. And we don't, we're not going too short either. From, from there to there to there. And we do what we call brick cutting. This is a popular technique that we've done for years. All right, and then I just comb that through and you'll see the pieces fall through and that will make it a little bit lighter for me to be able to curl and style the hair a little bit later. Okay, second last section. These sections you don't want to be too thick because you want to be able to approach the hair uh, internally. So if it's too thick, you're not going to reach the other side. But by having it quite transparent, it, let me see if that's, see that's a bit too thick. So what I'll do, I'll do this in two sections. Again, keep your sections nice and clean. Last section here, you can just put forward again through the clips. Make sure you've got the section in your hand and now you're working internally. Using the comb nice and high, elevation at 90. All right, the, the top is cut. We're gonna focus mostly on, I'll do, I'll do it in two sections because it's getting wider, it's getting bigger. Sorry, I'm just gonna pick this up from here. Is this her natural hair color? This, is this your natural hair color? Yeah. This is her natural hair color. A lot, <clears throat> a lot of it's from the sun, and you'll see that when it's dry. It looks like she likes that. She likes this? Mm -hmm. That's what, thank you. Wait till you see the end result. The end result is for me what it's all about, right? And now, <laughs> like she remembers doing this she back in the 90s. Yeah, she said things to remind <laughs> Listen, techniques are timeless. Techniques to time. If you think about Cleopatra with the bob, thousands of years old, you can't say that's not a classic haircut and that technique's old. No, techniques are timeless. It's how you use the techniques, it's where you use the techniques that makes it modern and cool. And then how you style it and finish it as well. Okay, last section for this back area. Again, it looks, it looks a little uncontrolled, but it's very much controlled. Come over, look, Ash, I've got my section that's here. It's nice and clean. And now you're working with the last section through here, and then you're using the scissors, just the tips of the scissors, and you're working internally. Cool. And then you just. Is it okay to be brick cutting when the hair is dry and when we're detailing? Yeah, you can do that. I don't like to do. The reason why I don't do that with curly hair is because when I've created the curl in the hair, I don't want to put my comb through it, I will just ruin the curl. So I want to do as much as I can now, and then later I can just do a little twist cutting, but not brick cutting, because brick cutting involves combing through the hair. And once the hair is curled and styled curly, you do not want to put the comb through the hair because you'll ruin the curl. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of a section from the back, half an inch, and I'm going to join it to the front because that's going to be my guide, okay? I'm just going to join that together for a second, and then I can do the other side. Come around the other side, Ash. Does this cut help prevent that shelf look that often happens? That, the, the shelf look? Yeah. What's a shelf look? I don't know what a shelf look is, I'm afraid. Maybe she's going to retype it. Um, I'm not sure, so if you want to ask that question again or rephrase it so I understand, I'll be happy to answer the question. All right, so now have a look what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the clips here because I've finished with this part of the haircut. All right, I'm gonna put the clip here. I finished with that part of the haircut. I've added half an inch into the top guideline, so I have a guideline. Now, I'm gonna take horizontal sections, keep taking horizontal sections. All right, and then we're gonna lift everything up. Shelf meaning like the layers aren't blended together. Oh, yeah. Because of the elevation, it's gonna blend so much better. Is that what she was asking? Yeah. yeah. Thank well, you. Oh yes, yes, very much so. Because when it falls, it'll fall more, it'll fall more transparent. It won't be so heavy and chunky like I did around the front. So yes, it it, it helps the hair to sit more, a lot more seamless, and it also promotes the curl and creates a bit more volume as well. So I'm just connecting that square, as you can see. Okay, elbows up. That's square. I'm going to cut the internal in a minute. I want to get rid of the guideline because the guideline that I, I just took from the back has already been cut internally. So I don't want to recut that internally again. So now this is my guideline for the rest of the top. And then I can do the internal cutting once I've finished the hair. So here, I'm going to work nice and square. All right. And then we're putting that through and cutting that square. 
square because her hair is so long. I would do it round. Round is good too when you're layering the hair. But in this case, because the hair is so long, I'm doing it square so it sits nicely on top of the underneath section that we've just cut. All right, and the last section, which is this one, I'm gonna pick up all the hair. You can see, because I've clipped the hair, I know exactly what needs to be cut. I'm gonna direct it all forward. And then what we're gonna do is make sure we have that guide cut as well. Can you see that, Ash? Would you perform this technique on the tightly curled hair? I don't know. I, I, it all depends on the actual curl. I don't want to say yes as a you know answer because I don't know. A lot, a lot of the tighter curly hair clients that I have, if it's shorter, I, I, I don't cut it like this. There's different ways of cutting hair. And I, I don't want to say just yes, because it all depends. Curl, curl can mean anything. Everyone's got a different curl. So I've got to look at the curl before I can say yes to that answer. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm just, I want to be super honest with you rather than just say, oh yeah, just do whatever. It all depends on the curl. If the curl's very tight, I would approach it differently. If it's shorter, I would approach it differently. I could probably even cut it dry. But in this case, I'm actually just cutting it wet because it's, I feel like the right technique for Maggie's hair type and for what we want to create from an end result point of view as well. By doing great cutting, is that accentuating the curl? Yes, promotes the curl, absolutely. As well as removing weight? Correct. You'll see that at the end. It gives it volume, it promotes the wave or accentuates the wave like you've just mentioned um, and uh, reduces weight. Can you do this uh, cutting on straight hair? So, good question. Uh, I wouldn't be as aggressive with, with the um, twist cutting and the brick cutting because when it's straight, you know, it all depends. If you're a bit too aggressive, you might see that. But with curly hair, it's totally fine. What I've done is not too aggressive, actually, to be honest. It's very moderate. But you've just got to be careful with straight hair not to be aggressive with the twist cutting or the brick cutting because you can see it once you blow dry it smooth. You, it's possible to see it. All right, so using this section here, doing the same thing, using the previous guide, as you can see, all right, I'm gonna cut that square. I'm wearing a mask, that doesn't work, okay. So, gonna take the guideline back off, because we've already cut that, putting it back down, and just working in front of the guideline. There's a little piece there, which is mine, that's no longer needed, because I've cut that from before, and I've also twist cut that, so it's gonna work section by section horizontally, making sure each section is lifted and picked up nice and clean and worked square through the top. All right. Becky, Matt, when curly hair is laid using traditional cutting methods, the result is often unflattering, creating a heavy shelf in the hair. So does this cut prevent that? Yes. There's no way here that I'm gonna create a heavy shelf in the hair. And all, all curly hair is different. So you can't say one technique works for all types of curls. You've got to look at the curls, look at the hair type, and then choose the correct technique that works for you. This technique might not work for you. That's totally fine. You guys do what I think works for you. But for those that want to try something different, and, and if you like the end result, you should give this a go. It's a nice way of approaching hair to create and promote the curl with a nice shape that we're creating as well. Uh, you can DM me if you live in Miami and want a haircut. I would love to cut your hair, Suzanne. You're welcome. It'd be good to see you, meet you. Are you. Where are you from? Let me ask that question. Are you from Florida, from Miami? And Becky said thank you for answering the question. You're welcome, Becky. Thank you for asking the question. I love it. Okay, so guys, I've cut both sides. I've done internal cutting. What's really important, if you could stand right in front, Ash, is I've done this side, I've done this side. Guess what's next? To actually check both sides. We call it cross-checking. Make sure that what you've created is balanced. Now, it might be slightly off. Let's have a look. But you've got to cross-check both sides to make sure that it's balanced. As I'm combing through, look, you get more hair coming out. It's fine. It's from the twist, uh, the brick cutting. All right. Just gonna cross check both sides and that looks pretty square to me. See all these little hairs? 
These have already been cut. I don't know if you can see on the camera, Ash, can you? These hairs have already been cut. All right, these are just hairs that are coming from the brick cutting. Okay, I'm gonna comb that one more time. So make sure we're happy with that part of the cut. And then what you're gonna see is what we call a hangover, okay? Not something that we call after having a few drinks, but something that you'll see hanging over the guideline. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is the last part of the haircut. So what, what I do now, I'm gonna get the product if I can. Have you got the spray with you? Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is spray everything and you're gonna get a little hanging over the front guideline and the bottom guideline, okay? Can I have the um, spray? Ah, oh, so much better already, I can tell. It's gonna be a lot lighter. Cool, I'm just gonna wet this down completely with the luster lock. Even before I style it, you know, it's so important you re-wet the hair to re-promote the curl because you've been combing it for the last hour. So you've gotta re-wet the hair and get that curl back. Moisture is what promotes the curl. Okay, so just gonna comb all that through. Have a look at the hangover that we have. And that hangover might be more aggressive, might be less aggressive, all depends on the length that you cut the layers. Okay, so if I can get you to stand up for me, Maggie, if you don't mind. Okay, step forward a little bit. Okay, great, hold the spray for me. Okay, if you just wanna come here, Ash. Have a look. So when I come to comb this through, see how there's a little bit hanging over the guide? So what I do, because of the point in the hair, so what I do, I just firstly comb that through. Okay, one thing I don't want is um, it to come into a point. So what I do, I come through here. I can see my guideline. Can you see my guideline? Can, can they see that? Yeah, cool. Okay, so what I do, all in one section, keep it square. Make sure I can see my guideline right there. And then we're cutting that over. That's the hangover that we're cutting. Okay, so now it's layered and blended in beautifully with the underneath disconnected area. And we still have an element of strength through the bottom. I don't want this to be too weak through the bottom. Sometimes when we overlay a curly hair, it could look a little bit too stringy and fragmented around the bottom. I don't want that. So by working it in this technique, it gives me the strength throughout the exterior, but the volume internally, okay? And everything's pulled back and cut square. So. What I do now, I just want to check for balance. So I just put that through like a comb and check, and I use the comb as the guide and just comb that through. Now you might get, let's check for balance technically as well, like with your fingers, keep really still. Any other questions? The thinning curly hair creates stringy ends of the growth and a bully look close to scalp. Um, so if you over if you over thin any hair, yeah, it's going to look too stringy. So I would I would be aware of exactly how much uh, thinning you're going to do. It's good to know the techniques and then utilize the correct one for the right hair type. I think that's probably the best thing to say because you yeah you can you can thin out anything. If you have thick hair, you can overly thin thick hair. Take a seat. So you've just got to be aware of what you're thinning, how much you're thinning, and constantly look at what you're doing in terms of the finished result. So actually what I'm gonna do now, the other hangover, we, we, we dealt with the back hangover, let's deal with the front hangover, because we work with disconnections, but that's what creates the shape. But what you'll find is you'll probably get a little bit of a hangover through the bottom here. So what I do, I take a section through in there. So don't think it's a mistake. No, this is the way we're cutting it, because we've got now disconnections and, and layering through the top. That's different than just the normal connected haircut. But Around the perimeter, we want to make sure there's no hangover. So you'll see through in here. Ash, if you could just come closer. Can you see that? You can see the guideline. Can you see that? I'm just going to point cut this through, so I want it to be nice and soft. And that's the forward graduation. Okay, and that's the hangover through in there. All right. Thank you. I hope so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, I'm going to make sure I begin drying now and uh, hopefully you'll get, be able to see the end result. If not, just know that I'm gonna make sure, uh, Joico is gonna post it on their uh, Facebook, Instagram page, you're gonna see the end result. I'm also gonna do it on my Instagram page as well. You're gonna see the whole thing, the end result on Maggie's hand. It's gonna look amazing. And that's what I really wanna spend the next few moments doing, is actually styling the hair, because styling it is just as important as cutting it, okay? And I think the right products is what makes curly hair look really, really good. Oops, that's your mask. 
Would you have her tilt her head or always have her head straight? I like her head straight when I'm cutting the whole haircut. Okay, because that's what's going to give you balance at natural fall, at natural movement. So if I get her head tilted, that's not the natural movement of her hair. So by having her at natural fall, it gives me the exact understanding of what to do with the technique and how it's going to sit. Hopefully that answered that. Okay, come over this side. Actually, you've got to come over this side there. Cool. Okay, point cut. And just make sure from the back it's all connected also without impacting the one length. Okay, I'm just gonna connect that through. So Liz said she's doing a virgin trim on a lock this week and she thinks she's gonna use this technique. I hope so. Looks clean, so she looks really good. Yeah, try this technique. You know, and then your twist cutting and your brick cutting can all be a little bit more aggressive or less aggressive depending on the actual type of hair that you're working on. Okay, so it's just a touch longer through in here. So I felt that, I've got to go back in and cut. There's a little bit here that I'm not, I could feel it's a bit longer. Okay, so it's gonna go like that and cut that a little bit more, cool. Again, check for balance, make sure it's perfect. The good thing is we got balance underneath the guideline, so this makes it a lot easier. All right. Let me just check one more thing from the bottom. Are you going to style her with her own curl? Yeah, that's the whole purpose of today. Absolutely. Watch. Um, can you please provide the information on the styling product you're going to be designing? I'm going to do it right now for you. I love these questions. So good. All right. So I've put lots of product. Lean back for me. All the way back. Uh, let me get the hair. Lean back, 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 back. Cool. Like that. Yeah, that'd be pretty. All right. Cool. Are you comfortable for a second? Just for a second. Get comfortable. I'm just going to put water back in here. There you go. Okay, water is what's going to help promote this curl a lot more. Let's get moisture. You can use the luster lock. I put loads of luster lock in here. And you, like I said, you can be quite generous with the luster lock because I'm going to put about three products in here, a nice mixture of three products for curly hair. Write these products down because I promise you, I've used these com this combination before and it works really, really well. But you can see what's going on. I'm beginning to promote the curl a lot more. Okay, look at that. Okay, it's gonna be so good. Wait till I'm done. All right, cool. Now, what we're gonna put in the hair, let's make sure there's enough water in there. Okay, because that's what's promoting this curl. Because I've combed it so much Okay, cool. Now, let's have a look at the products we're going to use. So first, we're going to use the Joy Whip. We're going to use the Joy Whip Firm Hold, okay? So, come over. Oof, I nearly fell. Yeah, old school mousse. Okay, and we're going to put that into the hair everywhere. Okay, mousse controls the curl better than most things, I could tell you right now. But some of you are gonna say, oh my God, mousse. It's gonna make the hair crunchy. Yes, it is gonna make it crunchy, but then we take that crunch out um, afterwards. But it controls the hair so much more. Hold that for us. For curls, is it best to apply product on damp or wet hair? Damp and wet hair, like, like this. I don't know, this is damp or wet? It's not dripping, but it's definitely wet. So I'm not sure what the difference is between damp and wet, but I would say the way it is now, I had to re-moisture all the hair with Luster Lock and Aqua water. And what we're doing is putting the mousse in so that the water, the, the dampness in the hair helps to have the product mixed in a lot better in here. Wow, it's gonna be so good. You can see I've been generous with the mousse, guys. It's gonna make it crunchy. Don't worry about that. You're gonna get the crunch out. It's easy to take the crunch out. What it's gonna do is begin to control the curl for me. Okay, and look, I'm using my, the best tools I have, which is my hand. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is add another product in here. All right, the second product we're gonna use, it's a cocktail. First, we use the Joy Whip. First, we use the Luster Lock, then the Joy Whip, and then we're gonna use these two. Okay, Defy Damage, Protective Shield, 
and color therapy oil. So if you can just hold that for me. This is a new one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She's got a lot of hair. On wet hair. Cool. Lean back again a little bit for me. All right, working that through. And then the remaining, you put around the front and through the top. Put your head forward again for me. There you go. All right, so we're getting a lot of moisture in here, oil, mousse, and now we're going to use the Defy Damage. Okay, once you've got this in here, okay, and get the ends. The ends are so important, you get product on those. And then we got the Protective Shield. Again, this is new as well. About that much. This is the Defy Damage Protective Shield. I love this product. You can use this on straight hair, curly hair. You can use it on all types of hair. It's a really good product. It's not too heavy either. It protects against the UV, feeds the hair, moisturizes the hair. It's got uh, arginine and keratin in there and rosehip oil, which actually is really good for the hair. Would the brick cutting eliminate some of the hair that sticks out and breathe for its other texture technique? Uh, say that again, Ashley. Sorry. The brick cutting um, method you use, would that eliminate some of the hair that sticks out and breathe? Um, not sure, because when I braid, I, I work with um, like a waxy product, so the, it doesn't really affect that. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't believe so, no. Okay, so I've just combed this through. Sorry if I didn't answer that correctly. I, I'm not sure, actually, of, of how, how I could answer that. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so, I didn't understand the question so much, sorry. Okay, so working through, if you can answer that, ask that question again, I'll be happy to answer that. Guys, I'm just randomly, right now, randomly, just twisting. I'm not gonna twist the whole thing, just randomly here and there, so it's got that imperfection but it's also got a few nicer curls that are in here as well. And just going through randomly, come over a look from the back, just picking up hair, not too thick, and just having a wide end comb and just twisting sections through. So you've got a few nice purposed curls with some natural curls as well. And I'm just randomly going in both directions. So one will be one direction, the other will be in the other direction, and we're just gonna do the same through the back here as well. I have not, and I don't believe I do, and I'm sure I can learn from her, absolutely, him or her, whoever it is, um, but thanks for asking, I, could, I, should, I should check it out, I'm guessing they do something similar or different, which is awesome, it's always good for me to look at different ways of styling and cutting, because, you know, who, as an educator, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm the first to put my hand up and say I want to learn more, you know, so we're never too good to learn from other people. Um, so if this person that you're referring to is amazing, I'm, I'm sure I'd learn a lot from that person. You know, curly hair, there's so many different ways of cutting curly hair, guys. This is not the way. This is a way. You know, there's so many different ways. And it's just about learning different ways. And then, I guess, applying the techniques and seeing what works for you, what result you like, and then going with it. And that's the great thing about hairdressing is, We've got so many people on social media to learn from, but you're not going to like everyone's work. You know, one thing I suggest, if you don't like someone's work, don't say anything negative. Number one, stay positive and be always complimentary. If you don't have anything good to say, maybe don't say it. But the other thing is be open to learn and try different techniques, not just from me or from one other person, but learn different ways because all of us have had experience in different countries on different textures for many different years. And you as a as an artist might like someone's work more than others, which is fantastic. That's where you want to learn from. You want to learn from the people that you connect with and that you feel like, you know what, I like the way that person cuts hair. I like the way that person styles hair. Just be open, be a sponge, learn from everybody, you know, but respect also everyone's work as well. You don't have to disrespect people's work because you might not do it that particular way. I hope that uh, encourages someone. And if someone is this, you know, giving you a little slack, or giving you a little trouble on social, don't take it personal, just laugh. I, I laugh at it sometimes. They say, they say at least 10 to 15% of comments are going to be negative. So if you got 100 views or 100 likes, 10% of those people, which is 10 people, 
are going to be negative. But if you've got a thousand, it might be a hundred. So my question is, do you want to be more influential? Do you want to reach more people? Well, be prepared to have a little bit more, I guess, negativity on, on social because people just, they, they, they like sometimes being a little negative on social media, but let's lead by example and be positive with all the work that we see all around and about us. Ooh, that's a little motivational talk for today. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not doing the whole head. That's it. Now, products are in there. Dryers here. How long we got? We got five minutes. All right. I'm going to dry on full heat and half speed. Okay. And this is the trick. This is the trick. Get the hair and do not touch it. Just let it dry. You've got to be patient and let it dry. So I'm going to continue drying like this and the reason why I don't want to touch it right now the more you touch it the more frizzy it's going to get let it dry completely when it's dry completely it'll be kind of crunchy and then what you do you start to scrunch the hair it's called a scrunch dry you start to scrunch the dry, scrunch the hair and put the dryer scrunch the hair and put the dryer and then you start softening that curl once that's soft all the way around and it's completely dry then you can put your fingers through it or you can blast the hair dryer on cool air just to separate it. But you've got to be patient and you've just got to dry it like so without touching it. Because I know as hairdressers we want to touch it. Don't touch it. Leave it. Have the discipline just to leave it and let it dry completely. This will take me about 15 minutes to dry. Uh, and then once it's completely dry, I'm going to start to separate it. Stay tuned on my Instagram, on Joyco's Instagram, because you're going to see the, the finished result through pictures and also through an edited cool video version of this whole live that we've done today. Uh, am I wrapping up or should I keep going? So, yeah, so I, I want to just recap. Uh, some of you maybe have just joined. I want to recap um, what products I use today because I think this is a real major game changer when you use the right products on curly hair. So I'm going to show you the hair. Come, come closer. It looks crunchy. It's not dry yet. Don't, don't judge it like this. You've got to wait till this is completely dry. Then I start scrunching it with my hand. Then I start separating it and it starts looking more and more natural. But don't touch it until it's completely dry.